part three of my last Colorado adventure is the Colorado Railroad Museum, which of course is full of train stuff. Huzzah! So this is a very short train. You've got the engine. And then isn't the caboose, the red caboose, usually the kitchen? Engine and kitchen, say that fast three times. Whoa. Here's a traffic control center for the railroad. So some of those catastrophic accidents, I bet you some of them started from a place like this. So the whole thing with the uh, traffic signals comes from railroad signals. Makes sense. Smile, wave to your audience. <laughs> Well, we could go up and join her here. So it's a couple steps up. Trains are tall. Trains are mostly dirty, but we could see over into the coal car here. There's no coal at the moment. Look, this is where it would be going. I've been on trains where these have been active and it is bloody hot in there. Check this out. Here's the boiler. And this is where she was waving from. So we could check up here. And there's everybody outside the station. It looks like a lot more like a train station from the side than it does from the end. I know a dance company called Watch Your Step. Ooh, fancy room here, woo. can't go all the way through the car. We can only go here and admire where passengers got to sit. Do, tra do you guys think that trains turn everybody into overgrown kids? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let me think about it for a yes. <laughs> car on the train this is the easiest step to get on though Thank you. <laughs> oh. what watch your step hey there's no watch your step sign on this one and the car through there there's the you can take that to go back but sorry we're going this way rolling stock from here. We get to visit the roundhouse later. So now why doesn't it move out of the way when you roll the train on and off? There's this thing that locks it in position. It's bad if it moves while you're rolling the train on. So basically in order to make this thing run, I have to oh, cool. unlock it. And at that point though, there's really nothing holding this. But did you notice when I stepped on it? Oh yeah. It's yeah. bouncing. Wow. So this thing's perfectly balanced. It operates a little bit like a teeter-totter. When you roll the train out, it'll actually go crash, and you roll across it, and it's gonna balance, and then it'll go crash on the other side, and then you back up until you feel yourself floating. Wow. Then you're ready to be turned. You don't want the weight on the outer rail. You want the yeah. weight on the inner cone bearing. Really? Oh my God. 
then, then you just push it. I can do this all by myself. With the locomotive. And it isn't any worse with a locomotive because it's balanced on rollers. Hmm. Faster, faster, go faster. <laughs> it's not about fast. You have to, you have to, to go all the way around. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to put you all in charge of going faster and around in circles. Because, yeah, the next thing is let's say I want to stop at that track. I have to then oh, dig nice. in. And so now that momentum's working against you now. Oh. I know how to do it, which is why I don't go faster. <laughs> wow. Um, number six there never carried people or stuff. It was a work vehicle. And the little one that's inside the door is one of the originals, and so it wasn't big enough. I'm having fun with this because every 15 years, you have to do a complete rebuild of a steam locomotive. Um, every 15 years, so three means every five years we're trying to get ourselves on a schedule. And if you look at this pretty locomotive, which took 14 years and $2 million, mm. which isn't very much really when you think about it, but if you then step over and look at this locomotive, and I have to let you all in, just uh, look out for dirty things and don't fall in holes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good tip. Um, you can see what it takes to get a locomotive. Oh my God. You literally have to get down to where you can get to every side of the pressure vessel because you have to non-destructively test it to see if the metallurgy is still capable of withholding the design stress, pressure, basically. And so this boiler is being mapped. You can see a little grid pattern. And we will test every one of those squares in an overlapping fashion to make sure that there's not something we can't see that would literally cause this thing to you know, maybe, maybe call up later on because it's really important that you not have any issues in a boiler like this. The interior is actually in good shape. Um, it's the exterior that is not weathered so well. And so mostly this next run through our shop is going to be replacing most of the wood on the exterior. Man. Although, um, we aren't expecting to find anything that in the round is part of the boiler, but in the, what's it called? The, the woodwork in this. Which corners and things and has stables to hold it all together. Yeah. That's usually where the problems are experienced because that's where the fire burns and where you have cinder and water. Yeah. The upholstery is in pretty good shape and the okay. woodwork is going to um, be spectacular. There's actually more than you may think. Yes, the train is on the National Register of Historic Places. Not the property the train is on. The train itself is on the National Register of Historic Places. So that's a lot of train for that little track. <laughs> oh, wow. And it really is not ridiculous. As I said, it's, it's, it is, uh, that locomotive model was known for being pretty stable. Uh-huh. Now I gotta do I get on video. So okay, so you said 1881, 1899, which is right on the front, and the 1920s. And we are ending this train museum tour with the most ultimate of Colorado cars or Colorado trains, the Coors train, because yep, here, Colorado. What else would it be?